Dr. Nerds again working on safety today and um, I gave a little introduction to what safety is about and now I just want to talk a little bit about fire, a little bit about chemical exposure and a little bit about um, cuts and burns. Um, this will be sort of like the quick, the quick course and I really recommend that you go over all this each semester. Very important. Okay, I have an apparatus built here and one of the things we want to think about is how do you prevent fire from happening. One of the ways you prevent fire from happening is by building a good apparatus. If you build a good apparatus where all the joints are flush, and by flush I mean together, okay, where there's an opening for gas to get out, where there are no cracks in the apparatus, you will have a pretty safe operation going. Okay, what we worry about with organic distillation are fumes. If any fume escapes close to this heater, sparks from this heater could ignite that organic liquid and you could have a fire. So again, the important thing is that your joints are flush and there's no cracks. Do we have to have a release for the gas? Yes, because you never heat a closed system, right? That's number one rule in terms of um, explosion, ev evading an, an explosion. Where's the opening? The opening is either here or right down at the end where you're collecting the liquid, okay? But the rest of this apparatus is flush. It has happened where apparatuses are open, fumes come out, the liquid ignites. I've had this happen with ether, for example. Okay, why did it ignite? And at a heater such as this, even though it's not a flame, we never use flames in here, but even though it's not a flame, does occasionally give a spark off, and when it gives a spark off, it can, get, can ignite an organic liquid, so you have to be careful. Another thing is check out your, app, your heater. You know, these heaters take a beating, unfortunately. When you put the heater away, put it away holding the top piece as long as it's cooled down. Do not whip the heater around by its cord. When you do that, the cord separates. If the cord separates, you have a greater chance of exposing the wire or having the wire separate. The wire separates, you have an arc, and then you get sparks, okay? So make sure your apparatus is in good condition, there's no cracks in it, this is sealed up. If it's not, just turn it in. We will get it fixed or we will get you a new one, okay? Um, the other way you prevent fire is by keeping the setting, the heating setting at the level that's suggested in lab. Like if you feel like you're in a rush and you're like, hey, I think I'll turn it way up, don't do that, okay? If your, your instructor says to set it at 80, set it at 80. If they say to set it at 60, set it at 60. If they say to turn it up, turn it up. The reason we're really strict about this is if you do overheat a liquid, you can cause a fire. That can be a problem. Okay, so um, now, what would you do? Why do we build these apparatuses up high? We talked about this in the beginning of the year. We do it so that if you had an emergency, you could quickly lower this and stop heating the liquid. Okay, that's a really good thing to be able to do. Obviously, if you, because this is a concave heater, if you built it on the bench, you would not be able to remove the heater rapidly. So when you have a problem, whether it's boiling over, bumping, fire, anything like that, explosion, potential explosion, you want to be able to get that thing off, okay? Um, so supposing in spite of your best efforts, in spite of everything you had done, you start to suspect you're going to have a fire, okay? Or the apparatus just catches fire. First of all, how would you expect that you're going to have a fire? Usually smoke precedes a fire, okay? So if you were looking in here and you saw a lot of smoke, that's an indication you're probably going to have an ignition at, at any second. What would you do, okay? Well, if you, th you, you suspected it was going to catch on fire or it was on fire, you would immediately do what? Would you be a hero? Don't be a hero. Don't be a hero. This is what you should do. You should take this pull this down, all right? What's the advantage of taking that and pulling it down? Taking that and pulling it down reduces the oxygen content in the space, and in all likelihood, this fire will go right out. If it's, if it's seemingly controlled, or it's just smoking, it's not a bad idea to pull the plug out. That's not a bad thing to do. Generally, though, don't be a hero. Like, if, if you have a problem in here, get away from it. 
if you have a second, pull the hood dirt down. If you have two seconds, pull the plug. That's all I do, usually. These are small amounts of liquids, and they'll usually burn out, okay? Now, supposing it really was out of control and we felt we had to do something about it, ordinarily what I would do if it was burning and it wasn't going out is I would go and get a fire extinguisher. The fire extinguishers are on each side of the room. As I said, this is a chemical extinguisher, okay? The CO2 extinguishers have big cones. A CO2 extinguisher could be used really for most organic fires. There are certain metals that are incompatible with CO2, such as magnesium. Um, we use magnesium once during the year. Um, the CO2 extinguishers are very bad for paper fires because they blow out a lot of CO2 and it creates, um, it blows the paper all over the place. But you could use CO2 on this or a chemical, okay? If I want to put a fire out, if my apparatus was on fire, I would take the hose out, I would pull this pin, it comes out very easily, I would start squeezing, and in this, and I would move the hose back and forth over the bottom part of the fire. Having put out a couple of these little fires over the years, and I mean only a couple, they go out right away. And in fact, the, the pressure that comes out of these tanks is so strong that it'll just, it breaks the glassware and just pushes it into the back of the apparatus. So usually we just let the little fire burn out. Okay, now, supposing you caught fire, what would you do? If you caught fire, if you noticed your neighbor's hair was on fire, their clothes were on fire, the way we prevent this is by what we wear, okay? If you have long hair, you should pull it back. You should never wear things that are dangling. You should never um, wear anything that's, that has fringes or anything that's hanging off, and we never use Bunsen burners. But supposing someone actually caught fire, what would you do? You know, what would you do? You might take your apron and put the fire out on the other person. You could use the fire blanket. And I showed you in the earlier film, the fire blanket is over there. When you were a little kid in grammar school, they taught you stop, drop, and roll. But the thing is, if somebody was on fire, is to stay calm, very, very purposefully get them in the blanket, down rolling, or under that um, water, water uh, spray, or in the fire blanket. It's very unlikely someone would catch on fire because we don't use burners, all right? But if there was a fire, that's where it could happen. Okay, so again, review this, and don't get overly worried. Just be safe. If you're safe, everything will go fine. So have fun in lab.